What you see here is aluminum ingot. This aluminum ingot's made from recycled aluminum. A variety of type of materials that get recycled every day. More than just the aluminum can. And when you look at a pellet like this, strapped, it's about $3,000. Aluminum is so vital to our everyday lives and gotta know. Something simple like this is worth a lot of money. And so what am I sitting on in this row? This is a truckload of aluminum ingot. Value, approximately seventy to $75,000. That's nothing to sneeze at, is it? Something to get into. We're talking real value here. What products are actually made from recycled aluminum that are found in automotive industry. Yeah, recycled aluminum is a big piece of every car that you see on the road, I think, regardless of uh, brand or OEM. The wheels on all these vehicles are 70% plus recycled. The engine blocks, the motor housing, other powertrain parts, all those things, key components in the structural integrity and safety of a vehicle are made by recycled aluminum every day. surprise to a lot of people oh, yeah. that they that your car has recycled aluminum in it they're like what from the wheels to the engine block to the cylinder heads the uh, alternator casings transmission casings even to the the do, hoods do you and ever the ask them well, where do you think it came from yeah sometimes they don't know they don't know they just i just magically showed up most of our end product ends up in the automotive industry but it's really across the spectrum so Outdoor power equipment, uh, could be medical supplies, could be ATVs, uh, off-road vehicles, um, could be something in the electric power grid. All, all those different uses uh, could be made by these products. Because aluminum can be recycled in, indefinitely, they're using more and more aluminum in different products. I think the big example in the automotive industry is uh, our automobiles are now using aluminum bodied instead of steel bodied. Some of that is for light weighting so that it's more fuel efficient, but also it's been proven to be uh, a strong product and just as safe as steel. But you know, there is magic in what we do because so many people I talk to during this, this docu-series, the, the travels throughout America that we've done, and they go, well, what are you here for? I see all your cameras, what are you doing? We're doing a documentary on the recycling industry. Oh, well, I do my cans, or I, I do it. Okay, great. Well, let's talk about what we're really talking, we're here filming. Everything you touch in your daily life, so we're, like they're at this bar and, and it's got a stainless counter. Where do you think this is coming from? Absolutely. Where's all the aluminum, all the, you know, where's it all coming from? Yeah. And they, they always say, wow, I didn't know that. So this is our aluminum ingot process. We can get a little closer if you want. Well, we want to get closer. All right. Oh, yeah. There's both aluminum right there. So we're casting aluminum ingot right now. What, what's happening is we're pulling directly from the furnace, obviously still in its molten state, running through a trough line into our casting line, which we'll get you guys a little closer look at. Now, there's your molten aluminum from falling there. Yep. There's something fascinating about seeing recycled aluminum get melted and get into this red-orange state, the molten state. So why then do you think our industry is so misunderstood and it's being called the junk and waste business when in fact we are a commodity-based business. What needs to change and how do we change the mentality that our industry from metal recyclers to secondary aluminum smelters that go into manufacturing, what needs to change for people to understand we are a commodity-driven business? What, what needs to change and how are we going to do that? 
It's a good question. I, I do think the industry's misunderstood. Uh, again, you mentioned commodity. All of our goods that we sell are usually based on some index. We're tracking LME and COMAX and the price of silicon and all these different commodities every day because that's, again, a backbone of our business, knowing those things. Here you can see the molten flowing into the molds a little bit better. Looks like silver. It does. <laughs> and uh, at this temperature, aluminum has the same kind of uh, viscosity as water. So, but it's, it solidifies very quickly. So you'll see as it pours out of our wheel and into the molds, each mold holds about 28 pounds of aluminum. So you can see they're still, they're starting to solidify on the surface here. Then we have our misters, which help set the, the, the bottom of it for a nice quality finish before it continues on to get cooled the rest of the way. But I think part of it's an image problem as well. For example, I was uh, drinking my coffee from the coffee shop this morning and you, you look on the cup and it says, you know, 30% post-consumer scrap. And that's a branding thing that I think some companies have done a very good job of. But yet here we are sending out ingot with 90% plus post-consumer, post-industrial scrap. And that's not a story that's told and it's not branded well enough, but um, I hope that's something that the industry can work on together. And I think it's important that we understand you don't build vehicles from junk. You don't build vehicles from waste. You build vehicles from high quality commodities, steel, aluminum, copper. These are the main materials, not all of it, but most of this raw material is coming from the recycled materials industry. Here's kind of the end of the line as far as the mold. So they come off, uh, they are kind of ejected from their mold, and then they run up through the rest of our process, which helps to basically stack them per customer specification. We have a robotic stacker, which will pick them and place them. And then everything is weighed, banded, and basically ready for the customer at that point in time. Now it ended at the end of the line as aluminum ingot. What an incredible process from shredding cycled aluminum to being made into molten aluminum, poured in the ingot. Coming off the line, ready to go to a die caster to make aluminum products that we use in our everyday life from automotive, recreational, medical, you name it, it's coming from plants like this across America. All this material uh, is going to be shipped to our various customers. You can see the various spray paint colors indicating different alloy. Every pound in here is gonna be sold and turned into various automotive components or, or other components. People don't picture the aluminum products that we receive. They don't see those as, as a commodity, if you will. They, they see them as, oh, this is something that we're disposing of because what they do is they see the the person on the side of the road picking up that material, but they don't realize it's going to a much bigger purpose and it is a commodity. But it's the recycled aluminum that comes from an ingot that gets made into all these products we use every day. Absolutely. Got it. Here at this facility, you're one small segment but a major component to our daily lives. One of the exciting things I think in our industry is we're able to look upstream and downstream and partner together with our aluminum recycling suppliers, with our customers um, to continue to Kaizen and have continuous improvement in our industry. I have no doubt that we're going to be able to upgrade it further and further. More and more technology is in the pipeline uh, to continue this business and to improve it uh, for the next generation. And so I hope that that next generation can, can jump in and take where we're at and take this recycling industry to the next level. What you see over here in front of me, you see material handlers loading a shear that cuts recycled steel. 
But each one of those pieces of equipment, there's an individual in there. Our industry provides amazing amount of employment opportunities for machine operators, mechanical work, trade work like welders, drivers, truck drivers. Our industry is a great driver of employment in America today. So when we were at Toyota and I was interviewing Donna Orff, she uh, she had been with Toyota for 21 years and uh, you know, she came out of HR and, and she was telling me how everybody in their plant, it's a diverse working group of people, men and women alike. They want to take care of their employees. They need their employees and the future employees who come to this plant to see that there's opportunity. Yeah, there is a lot of opportunity here. And to that point, yeah, you don't need a four-year degree to come work here. But if you come work here and you have aspirations for a four-year degree, guess what? We have tuition reimbursement. Do you so, really? That's yeah, fantastic. absolutely. So not only do we provide training here that can help you develop in advance, but if someone is interested, they can go on the outside and you know go to an educational institution. We have uh, team members that started in production. We uh, supported them getting advanced degrees. They came back and they work in machine maintenance now. So you know, for people, young people today, or anybody for that matter, looking for a job that brings meaning to the world that they live in, and they want to do something for Mother Earth, for that matter, do something positive, working in the automotive industry, working in the recycled materials industry, is doing just that. I love working for Toyota, and it's because of not only how they care for team members, but how they care about the community, and they want the community to be stronger. Because if the community's stronger, we're all stronger, right? We gotta work together. We've gotta let people know what the opportunities are. And college isn't for everybody. I mean, college is there, it's great, and it is for some people, but I think in the past, you know, as parents and as a society, we push people like, oh, everybody's gotta go to college, and they don't. Some people go to college and it's not for them and they fail and now they've spent a lot of money and didn't really get anything out of it. So to be able to work at a company that will give you the training that you need and again, you can develop from there if you want to, but there's great career, there's great stability, there's a very competitive pay, amazing benefits. You know, if, if you don't want to go to college, there's a lot of opportunities in manufacturing. All right, please introduce yourself. I am Melissa McQuarrie. I am a team leader at Toyota, Missouri, and I am a fundamental skills trainer. So you're a trainer. I am. I want to I have this thought, you know, in the Air Force, the recruits who go in, they don't want pilots because they want to train them what they know and how to do it the Air Force way. So when you have people who come in here who say, I know how to work on automobiles, is that a problem? It's not a problem, but it's just like, well, we gotta think it a little differently. You know, when you get the new training, how does that work? Actually, it's not bad because a lot of folks that I have come in that know automobiles. And so they actually teach me some things and I teach them the cylinder heads, because that's what we built here. And so I teach them from the ground up on how we do our process. I invest a lot of time in them. I want them to learn something because I believe knowledge is power. And when you go out there and you're instilling that and you're learning and you're moving up, you can make a career out of just being here. You don't have to be the guy with the four-year degree. You can be the guy with the college education and come in here and make a career for yourself and provide for your family. You know, Manufacturing can be for anybody. I think the stereotype is, oh, you know, burly men work in manufacturing, right? Women can work in manufacturing. Manufacturing is advanced. It's automated. Um, it's not, you know, maybe the laborious type of job that maybe it was 50 years ago. It is a job for anybody. There is career opportunity and advancement for anybody that wants it. Because I always tell them, the sky's the limit, but how high is your sky? You reach for your goals, set your goals, reach for them. And don't let anybody stop you. Don't be the naysayer. Go find somebody that's gonna encourage you, carry you along, mentor you, and you can make it. Be the first to volunteer. Let me learn something else. Be a learner. The more you learn, the further you go, and the happier you are. I love people. I, and I want them to learn. I want them to achieve their, their potential. But they have to decide to want it for themselves. 
And so I want to encourage them and I want to lift them up and say, hey, you know, it doesn't matter what you did or what was said to you in the past. I will encourage you if you need anything, come see me and I will help you. I will help learn whatever you need to learn or put you in contact with the right people. When you think of sustainability, think no further than the recycled materials industry. When you think of sustainability, think no further than the Toyota Motor Company. When you think of sustainability, think no further than the automotive industry in America. Because the vehicles that you see here are made with a great majority of recycled materials. Again, I would like to reiterate, Toyota Motor Company in Missouri and its subsidiary, Toyota Tusho, and its operation most in Troy, Missouri. Together, these two companies are what a true green manufacturing is all about. Most and their process of melting aluminum and providing the molten aluminum, as well as making the ingot for other automotive manufacturers here in the United States, is why we can say unequivocally that Toyota and Toyota Tusho and most are the greenest manufacturers in the U.S. today. And if you want to be part of something special, you want to be part of something that really is saving Mother Earth, this is the industry you work in. You want to work in the automotive industry. You want to work in the recycled materials industry because that's doing your part. When you want to make a difference, you want to make a difference in keeping Mother Earth clean. You want to reduce pollution. You want to reduce emissions. You want to reduce energy consumption. These two industries go hand in hand, the recycled materials industry and the automotive industry.